Good evening, everybody. Welcome to your Thursday evening Facebook Live. My name is Sarah Edwards. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and I come to you guys live every Tuesday and Thursday at 7 to show you a fun new project. So hopefully you guys had a great day. If you were in your craft room, hopefully you made some beautiful things. If you didn't get a chance it, to get into your craft room, the night is still young. We still have plenty of hours left in our day but not many more hours left in my day. I got up at three o'clock this morning to be at work by four, Came, got home about 10, 10, 15, and worked in the studio until about four. And then I went in and made dinner because Bo had taken Hank to the vet. So I made dinner tonight. And now it is Facebook Live time. So that was my evening. So card class did get 100% prepped, well, 95% prepped. I won't give myself 100% until tomorrow. But hopefully tomorrow I'll be able to start on the retreat make and takes. Um, the retreat pillow gifts are 100% done. That I will give myself is 100% done on all of the pillow gifts for the summer retreat. Um, I did every single one of them. I don't, I really tried to keep count of how many of the die cuts and how many ribbons I had to, how many bows I had to tie, but it just got a little too confusing and I couldn't keep track, but there's a lot and I cannot wait to spoil you guys rotten. Unfortunately, the retreat is 100% full. So after the summer retreat, I will email out the information for the fall retreat. So once one retreat is done, then I start on the next. I don't try to do more than one at a time because it's a lot for my brain to handle. So I limit it. I limit the space that is in there and there's not much left. Anyway, I'm just kidding. There's actually a lot of space left in there. Um, anyway, welcome. Sorry, I had something stuck to my shirt and I wanted to make sure it wasn't a bug and it wasn't. It was glitter paper. Shocker, right? So today's project, you guys are probably going to fall over in your chair because guess what I finally got done is the box for our note cards that I did, I don't know, probably three weeks ago. I know literally every single Facebook Live I've been saying, I swear I'm going to get to it. I promise I'm going to. And I made myself get to it and it is super cute and I can't wait to show you guys. And it's so easy. So I cannot wait to show you how to put, to, put it together. Good evening, Mary, Heather, and Darlene. Welcome. Okay, I'm going to point you over, not hit finish like we almost did last time. Okay, let's hopefully point you over. There we go. So this is the stamp set that I did all of the note cards out of. Let me bring the note cards in really quick. So I did them in all of the in colors. So I tried to coordinate the colors of our blender pins with the ribbon and then the little pots. So I think they turned out absolutely gorgeous. And then each of the cards has a different sentiment inside. Hopefully they all have a different sentiment inside. <laughs> These ones I think all do. So I tried to do, um, there's five different sense or six different sentiments in the set. So I picked five of them for all five cards and we have all of the envelopes. Now they are still naked. I don't know if I'm gonna get a chance to decorate the envelopes prior to sending these out, but all four sets of these are actually gonna go in the mail tomorrow. So I am giving them away as gifts, but this is the stamp set and the dies I use. It's on page 50. If you flip the page over to 48 and 49, it kind of gives you a nice um, synopsis of using each of the items that are in the suite or the bundles. So I really like to focus on showing what you can make with it. I know a few of you don't like birds and that's totally okay, but these aren't really the birds. We're using the little kind of flower pots. But this is the two designer series paper, the embossing folder, the ribbon, and the gems. I didn't use the ribbon that came with the set, but I did use the embossing folder, and I didn't use the little gems or the paper. I kind of made it my own, which is totally doable as well. So there's the set. Let me bring in the box. 
So here is your fun box. All five of your note cards fit in here. You can definitely decorate the back of it if you want to as well. But I did secure it with a Velcro. I did, I tried to do a belly band on it and it wasn't working right for me. And I thought I could tie some ribbon around it, but then sometimes ribbon is hard to get back to where it was originally. So I was like, huh, let's just do a little Velcro dot. And inside, you can fit all five of your note cards and envelopes. Just have to tuck that in and close it up. There we go. Thank you, Darlene. I actually forgot to turn my iPad on, so let's make sure we are live, which I don't see why we're not. Oh, yep, I think there we are. Okay, so let's get started with what we are going to need. You will need the stamp set and the dies if you're going to copy the exact, exactly what I did. Um, this is the little flower pot I used, and these are the flowers, and then I used all of the different sentiments in this set. You will need the in color cardstock. So you can use um, really any color depending on the designer series paper or the stamp set that you want. But this one I picked is pretty in pink. This one was Petunia Pop and this one is pretty in pink. We are going to do some scoring on it. But first you're gonna cut it. You're gonna leave it at 11 inches long and we're gonna cut it at seven and three fourths of an inch. Then you're gonna bring your scoring tool in and we're gonna put the seven and three fourths inch side up at the top. And we're gonna score this four times on this side. So we're gonna score it at half an inch. We're gonna score it at one and a quarter. We're gonna come over here and we're gonna score it at six and a half and seven and a quarter. So again, it's a half an inch, one and a quarter, six and a half, and seven and a quarter. Now we're gonna rotate it so the 11 inch side is up at the top, and we're gonna score this at three and a half, four and a quarter, eight, and eight and three fourths. So I did put all of these measurements up before I went live, so don't stress about writing them down. But I will bring in my handy dandy sticky notes in case you wanna do a screenshot of that really quick, just so you have it right on your phone. Um, but it is in the descriptions. And I just recently started adding the dates before I go live. So you guys can start writing down the date of the episode and then you'll know kind of where to go back to look for it. Okay, so this is what we're left with. We're left with two score marks right in the center and one side is thinner than the other. So I don't know if you guys can see the score marks, but you have a side that's three and a half inches long from your score mark and this side is about two and a quarter inches long. So what we wanna do is we wanna cut our edges off of the wider side. So let me bring in my little handy bandy chicken scratch so you guys can kind of see what I'm looking at. So down here is the smaller portion and this is the larger portion. We're gonna cut these two pieces out completely. So I like to do this. You can do it with scissors if you want to. I kind of like just to use my paper trimmer. And yes, I did put a new blade in my paper trimmer. So I'm just gonna line this up at the one and a quarter inch mark because that's where my last score mark was. So I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna take it all the way down to the eight and three fourths inch. So you see how I just chopped all that off, but I'm leaving this little smidgen right here. So now I'm gonna flip it over and do the same thing, but I'm gonna cut from the bottom. Let's see if I can do this sideways. So because this flap is up, I wanna start from the bottom when I slice up. And this one I'm just gonna take to the two and a quarter inch. 
So now I have both of my little flaps. And now you can take your paper snips and we're just going to snip off the edges. There's that side. And there's that one. You can use this for scraps if you want. I am just gonna throw them away just because there's too many score marks in here that I'm not gonna be able to use it to stamp on anything. So I'm gonna just go ahead and file those. So now this is what you're left with. I don't know if you can see it if I do it this way, so I'm just gonna flip it sideways. Now what you can do is come in and we're gonna score or we're gonna varnish on all of these score lines. Once you do this, you'll be able to see the short side and the thick side, like I was trying to explain earlier. So I'm gonna fold these in. Do the same thing on this side. So now you'll hopefully be able to see. You know what I was talking about? You having a wider side and a thinner side this is exactly how you want your box to look. Now you want to grab tear tape, which of course I did not. Oh, I do. I'm totally prepared today. It's sitting right beside me and I didn't even see it. So we're going to put some tear tape on these little tiny flaps. And I feel like my Facebook is not wanting to cooperate with me, so I'm going to reboot it. There we go. I think it's working now. So now that that is down, we're going to peel these off. There we go. And we are going to glue this or attach it here. And you can take your bone folder once it's down and give it a good press just to make sure it's going to stay nice and strong. This one is going to go on this edge. Give that a good crease. And guess what? You guys have totally made your box. That is how easy it is. So when I was making this and after I kind of put it all together, there is a smidgen of a gap at the bottom. Now, I probably could have gone in and redone the measurements, but I really think we would have had to have moved to a 12 by 12 sheet of cardstock. So I really wanted to focus on using stuff that we have in our craft room. Some people don't have 12 by 12 and it's totally okay. Um, but I just wanted to show that you can still make this and not have a piece of 12 by 12. It is literally our eight and a half by 11 that we just cut to seven and three fourths by 11. So on my original, I made my basic white piece a little bit longer. So when you tuck this down, it's like you, I don't even think you notice it until I point it out. So now we can decorate. I do have my piece. This is five inches by three and a half. I was so close. I was right on the five inches. Five inches by three and a half. And I'm gonna glue this down, but I'm going to try to not get glue right at the bottom. Just because we have that little smidgen of an overhang that I just don't wanna accidentally glue my box together. So I'm just gonna line this up on the three sides, and I know it's gonna hang down a little bit. So there's that. Let's bring in the uh, Pretty in Pink ribbon. I already colored these just because I know you guys saw me color them before, and I just didn't think you wanted to watch me color again. So I pre-colored all of these, so I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back. And if you're just logging on, don't stress. We're totally going to put another one together because I need to mail all of these out. So I should just put them together while we're all on the live. So 
So there's that. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I love making things that are totally duplicatable and this definitely is. Okay, so Stampin' Up! does not sell these and I almost 99.9% .9 of the time do not use anything that Stampin' Up! doesn't sell. But sometimes you kind of just need a itty bitty mini Velcro dot. <laughs> I almost forgot what they were called. So I'm gonna put, I put both pieces on one side. So now when I go to close it, I can push it down. And then when I lift this up, it is going to be in the exact spot it needs to be. Now you can come in and give it a good press and it's not gonna go anywhere. Let's grab all of our cards. The one thing I did um, after I put this box together, I realized that I needed to rotate my cards just because the bows are a little bit thicker. So it kind of made my box bulge in spots that shouldn't be bulging. So I just rotated them and it fit perfect. There we go. Look how fun and cute and a perfect little gift for somebody. So here's the Petunia Pop and that is the Pretty in Pink. So I already scored the other color, but I am going to cut again with you. Thank you, Darlene. Just in case you want to make this, that you don't have to rewind the entire video and watch me cut this again. So I have already scored it. To the right is my small edge and to the left is my larger edge. So I'm going to rotate this so my bottom smaller edge is facing my belly. And I need to rotate my trimmer because I like it this way better. I'm going to line this up to the one and a quarter inch mark. Thanks, Heather. Come up to the top and I'm going to slice this down until the eight and three fourths inch. So I just have that. Now I'm going to flip this over, line it up at the one and a quarter inch. And I'm going to start at the bottom just because that's where this flap is. So this one I'm going to take, slice it all the way down to the two and a quarter. And just go gentle when you get close to the edge because you don't want to accidentally cut your entire piece off. And then you say bad words and then I feel terrible. Okay, there we go. Now we can trim this off. If you're more comfortable using scissors, it's totally fine, you can. I just wanted a nice straight cut. And I'm actually glad I kind of made this little boo-boo so I can show you guys what to do if it happens to you. So I don't know if you can see that I didn't quite get on the score mark. I didn't quite cut right. So I'm gonna bring my trimmer back in and I'm gonna line this up again, just a smidgen over and I'm gonna cut this again. There we go. So even if you don't get it quite on the line, as long as your blade is sharp, you will be able to go back in and trim that again. Let's flip it over and do some score marks. Oh, there's the other one. Like I know there's another score mark right there. And then we just have to do these two edges. And I think if you do have the 12 by 12, I'm actually just talking out loud. I'm not entirely sure, but I think if you cut this, the same score marks, but if you cut it at 11 and a quarter, 
instead of 11, I think you won't have that little tiny gap if the box math is correct in my head. But I did not try it, so don't hold me to that. But I'm pretty sure it will work. these off. I'm going to come up here with this corner. There we go. Give it a good press. This one is going to go on the inside. Then you can bring your bone folder in. Press that down, varnish that glue. And we can do this one a little bit backwards. It doesn't have to be. Good evening, Stephanie, welcome. It, you don't have to do the front first. You can totally come over and put your box together. So gently push because there's nothing on the inside yet. Make sure your mini glue to, or mini Velcro dot sticks, and then you can come in, put your cards in, put the envelopes behind, and then you can decorate at the ends. And it actually might even be easier to decorate once your box is already full. Who knows? Let's scooch that up just a smidgen. There's that. Let's bring in our basic whites. These are definitely fun and such a great gift. Could you imagine doing these for the holidays? Oh my goodness. So you could do a pack for back to school for your teachers. You could do a pack for um, Halloween. You could do a pack for Thanksgiving, a pack for Christmas. Let's see, Valentine's Day, St. Patrick's Day, Easter. What other holidays? Fourth of July. I could definitely see these in so many little kits. Oops, that's, there we go, and grab your bow. There we go. That is how stinking easy and cute these note card boxes are to put together. So let's get these in the middle. I do have one more pack that I'm going to make another box out of. And all four of these are going out in the mail tomorrow. So yay, I definitely think it is going to put a smile on somebody's face as soon as they open the box. So there you go. Are you, did you guys really think that I was going to remember to make the box for that? I swear to you, I it was on my to-do list. I know it definitely was. And I'm so glad I waited because I actually think I made it a lot better than my original idea. So. Anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I will see many of you guys at card class on Saturday. If I don't see you on Saturday, I will definitely see you on Tuesday for another Facebook Live. Have a great evening. If you need any help with ordering anything or any of the products that I use tonight, definitely feel free to reach out. I actually don't go back to work until next Tuesday, so I will be in my craft room for the next, what is that, four days? I'm very, very excited. Anyway, have a great evening and we'll chat soon. Bye-bye.